Hello teachers out there and welcome to the third video in this series in which I show you how to make an Excel spreadsheet from scratch and today I'm going to be showing you how to introduce a rank for the results of your students uh, within this context or many other situations in which you might want to rank results one against the other so you know who has come top and who has come bottom uh, etc and we started in the first video by making this lovely spreadsheet to collect the results in the reading and writing tests of my lovely class of ne'er-do-wells here uh, and in the second video we've looked at producing a total and a percentage score of these results um, based on the uh, Excel formula which I showed you. So today we're going to be having a look at ranking these results and you could rank any of these results against each other. You could rank students by their reading result or by their writing result or by their total. Um, but today I've chosen to rank them by their percentage score because that's what, just what I feel like doing really. Um, it wouldn't make any difference if I ranked it against total, but I'm going to do it against percentage score. So um, to start with, we want to click in the cell where we want the rank to appear. So this is where we'll find out that Justin Bieber is um, 12th or 1st or 15th or however, or well, not 15th because there's only 14 in the group, but whatever rank he is. Um, so this is where your result will appear. And we're going to start by typing up here in the formula box an equal sign, because as we know, um, that's what tells Excel that we're looking for a formula or a function. And um, I'm just going to type an R to start with actually just to show you that there are loads and loads of different functions in Excel, um, some which round numbers up and down, um, some which produce a random number. Um, and all of these uh, you can use in different ways, but that not all of these would you use, I don't think, as a teacher um, all the time in, in, in most spreadsheets. So um, the ranks one that actually does come up quite a lot, which is why I'm showing you that today. But it's just interesting to know that there are others um, and you can always explore those at your own leisure. Um, so we're going to type an R and then A and K for rank. And if we press enter now, uh, Excel will complain because um, it's going name. It's saying, well, you've told me to rank, but you haven't told me what to rank. You haven't said, well, am I ranking these numbers here? Am I ranking uh, the admission numbers? What am I ranking? You've just typed in rank. So you've got to tell Excel what you want it to rank or it won't know. So I'm going to click back in the formula bar and I'm going to open a bracket. And this is where we put in our parameters, um, our, our factors in this equation. Um, and we're going to put in, first of all, you can see bolded here, a number. And it's bolded because that's the, uh, when you type a number in now, it's going to come under this category. Excel will recognize it as number. Um, and what it means by number is it means, well, which result do you want me to rank? Do you want me to rank their total score? Do you want me to rank their reading, their writing? And which person? Do you want this result to appear in this box? I mean, I know what I want. I want this result to be ranked. It's in the right column for Justin Bieber. And I said I was going to rank their percentage score. So I'm going to click on that and it says F2. And again, I could have just typed F2. It would do exactly the same thing. Now I'm going to put a comma. I've told Excel what I want it to rank, but I haven't told it what to rank it on what what the range should be, I suppose, in terms of ranking it. So what am I ranking it in terms of? Am I ranking this score against these four here? Or am I ranking it against all of them? Or am I ranking it even against these results here? So again, I've got to tell Excel what number am I ranking and against what, which seems obvious to us now, but we still need to just tell Excel so that it's clear. And this is what the ref means, which is the next number now, which is bolded. We need to give it a reference, um, which is a range of numbers. And so I'm going to type F2 and a colon and F15. And actually, again, I could have just dr clicked and dragged that range and it would have produced that for me. Um, but it's good just to show you. And the last column here, order, I'm not actually going to worry about. It's not really relevant to what we need now. I'm just going to close the brackets and press enter. And it tells me straight away, and I've obviously already formatted this box, um, it tells me straight away, Justin Bieber, in the range of these results, his result is 14th. He is the last person in this class of 14. He has got the bottom results, as you can see he has. He's got 2.5%, um, which is the lowest here. Now, something interesting is going to happen when I drag this down, because as I said in a previous video, you'd be silly to type that formula in for every one. You just grab the drag and drop handle and drag it down and it will recreate that formula for you in all of these boxes. But as I said to you last time, when you drag that down, it's going to increase the row number. And I'll show you what that does. 
and drag and let go. And just looking at these results for a minute, I notice something strange. What jumps out at me is at the bottom here, all of these three people appear to be first, even though Elvis Presley's got 77.5, so is Ringo Starr, but Bill Withers has only got 72.5, so how can they all be first? And this strikes me as a bit odd. And when I look at this, and I just check up here, as I push the down arrow, you'll probably notice why this has happened. We've got ranking going up, and the range is also increasing. So what that means is by the time we get to Bill Withers, we're ranking F15 in the range of F15 to F28. So on the basis of these numbers here, if I click up here, you can see exactly what Excel is doing. Because it puts boxes around, you can see it's ranking 72.5 in this range here. Now, out of all of these results, 72.5 is the top. So it's number one, and that's why it's number one here. And what we actually have is a situation where each time the row number is increasing for the percentage score, which it should be, but it's also increasing for the range. And we don't want it to do that because it means by the time you get down here, the range is fallen off the bottom. So there's an easy way to avoid that. And actually I showed you this in the last video, if you caught it, if you click into F2, this is our range here, the second part. This is the number we want this to increase. We don't want this to increase. So we're going to click inside of our range where it says F2. I'm going to put a dollar sign, shift four for me, in front of the two. And I'm going to put another one in front of the 15. And what that means is when I drag you down formula, please increase the row number here, but please leave this row number and this row number alone. You can think of a dollar sign uh, as telling Excel to keep a number static. Please don't move that number um, when I drag the formula, but please do move this one. There's no dollar sign here. So I'm going to press enter and that hasn't changed much. But now when I drag this formula down, you can see the other formulas are still the same. They haven't got the dollar signs in. It's because I haven't changed them yet, but I've done this one and I'm going to drag this down and you'll see these numbers are going to change. Fantastic. They've changed. And you can see now if we click on the bottom one here for Bill Withers and we click up top, uh, that's doing what we want it to do now. It's calculating what's, what uh, rank is this number on the basis of this range of numbers here. So that's much more what we want it to do. So sometimes it's helpful just to have a little look over the, the formula you've produced the ranks. Just check that everything looks right because it is really easy to miss out a small detail like that. Um, and then you end up with uh, erroneous results. So just be careful with little things like that. So there you go. That's how you produce a rank for the results in your spreadsheet. Um, I'm hoping to do a future video on some of the other functions in Excel, which I hope you'll find useful. Um, and also we might get on later on to doing a little bit of conditional formatting based on that, which is uh, something again I'll cover in a future video just to make things a little bit clearer um, in terms of those ranks. But for now, I'll say goodbye and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.